Hello everyone, I'm Sebastian Y and this is Econometrics. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and estimate distributed lag and autoregressive models with time series data in Stata. I'm going to assume that you have watched my previous video on time series to see how I set up a time series data set. I'm going to keep going with the same data set that I was using there. And so I already have a time variable set up in my data set. I'll have a link to that video in the description of this one. We also use the command ts set to tell Stata that that time variable is the time variable for our data. With that in mind, let's talk about the distributed lag model. The distributed lag model is a model that allows us to have changes in the explanatory variables continue to affect the dependent variable multiple periods into the future. What we're going to need to do is create some lags of our explanatory variable, which in our model here was games. The data set we're working with today is the Xbox sales data that I used in the previous video. For the distributed lag model, we are going to see if the number of games that came out in previous months continue to have an impact on sales of the Xbox 360 later on. We're going to have to create some lags of the games variable. So I'm going to generate a new variable. I'll call it games underscore one, just to indicate that we are lagging one period. And the way we do that is l1.games. And if we want to lag two periods, we can certainly do that. We can call that games underscore two. You can call it anything you want as usual. And to do that, we'll do l2.games. And you can do this for however many periods you want to lag by. Notice how Stata has told us that it generated one and then two missing values. The reason why that happens is that when we lag by one period, the very first period has nothing to grab from, and so we just can't use that observation anymore. And when we lag by two periods, we can't use the first two because, again, there's nothing to pull from. If we look at our data browser, we can see that we have our games here, we've got games one, and then we've got games two. And as you lag, all of the values shift down by one. We're not going to use them for this particular model, but it is also possible to create what we call lead variables. So for example, I could make games lead equal to f1.games, and that will put us one period into the future. If we look at games lead, you can see that the six from December 2005 is now showing up in November 2005. And then if we go all the way down to the end of the data set, we can see that much like how lags cut off the first entry in the data set, a lead will cut off the last one. To estimate the distributed lag model, we're going to run a regression of sales on games one and games two. This tells us that for every game that came out last month, we predict about 23,000 units sold. And then for every game, that came out two months ago, we expect about 14,000 units sold. Distributed lag models are particularly useful if you want to see how changes in policy affect outcomes over time. The other model that we're going to look at is called the autoregressive model. The autoregressive model is different from the DL model because we run a regression of the dependent variable on lags of itself rather than lags of a different variable. So to do that, we're going to have to create some more lags. I'm going to create the lag of sales of one period, just like before, l1.sales. And I'm going to do the same thing for two periods. And you can keep going and do more if you want. Then we're going to run a regression of sales on sales one and sales two. The autoregressive model is mostly useful for forecasting. It doesn't analyze any policy because we are just regressing the sales on lags of itself. What these results tell us is we can predict sales in a particular month based off of sales the previous month and sales two months prior. It's also completely possible to take a DL model and combine it with an AR model. So for example, we can put everything together by running a regression of sales on games one, games two, sales, one, and sales, two. You can also go from there and add in trends and seasonality if you want to. This has been a quick introduction to basic time series models in Stata. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.